Tonight on CTV, homeless shelters in the EMS industry are impacted by the holidays, as well as the return of one of CSU basketball's best players. Then, an exhibition exploring the current state of gun violence comes to Fort Collins. And learn more about these mysterious fluffy decorations showing up all around campus. All this and more tonight on CTV. Good evening, Rams. I'm JJ McKinnon. And I'm Madison Brummagem. Welcome to CTV News. With the rise of mass shootings across the country, gun violence has been a constant topic of conversation across the United States. Now, it's here in Fort Collins. One fatal shot killed a Fort Collins man after a vehicle pursuit last week. 51-year-old Justin Anderson, who had multiple felony and misdemeanor warrants, fled police northbound on I-25 after a precision immobilization technique successfully stopped Anderson he pulled a rifle on the deputies they fired back at Anderson until one fatal shot resulted in his death he was the only occupant of the vehicle and no one else was injured a man who according to police was shot in Old Town this September after being accused of chasing the man who shot him with a machete was just arrested Fort Collins police responded to reports of gunfire in Old Town Fort Collins on September 17th and found 36-year-old Loveland resident Francisco Sinez filled with gunshot wounds. As Sinez was taken to the hospital, police found the suspected shooter, a 21-year-old Fort Collins man, who was then released from custody pending further investigation. Witnesses' accounts determined that the incident stemmed from an argument between the two groups at a bar where Sinez began chasing the 21-year-old man with a machete. The man then shot back in self-defense. Sinez was identified in California and extradited to Larimer County, where he was charged with attempted murder. As gun violence ramps up, awareness becomes much more important. And now, an important ex exhibit to highlight its current state is coming to Fort Collins. Here to tell us more about this is our reporter, Kate Sherman. Kate? Thanks, guys. When you walk into the Hatan Gallery, you are faced with the sounds of gunshots and the abstract images of violence. It's called American Roulette, and it has been put together by a group of artists looking to spark a conversation about gun violence. Warning, some of the art and sounds may be sensitive to some viewers. Seven different artists have come together to create an exhibition that has made its way around the country and is currently in Fort Collins. This is the American Roulette Exhibition. It includes a series of art about gun violence in the United States. I talked to Dominic Sansoni, the founder of the exhibition and an artist whose pieces are used in the exhibition. He said it's not about gun control or politics, but rather facilitating a conversation about gun violence. I think, you know, there's kind of this notion that people that differ from us politically are going to be... Um, are going to be jerks are going to be confrontational and, and and they're not you know they're they're willing to engage in those conversations as long as we're respectful to them and and so that's been a very i don't want to say surprise but it's been a um it's been a definite positive that when we have had pushback on on things it hasn't been in any sort of like mean or demeaning fashion the American Roulette Exhibition is currently located at the Hatan Gallery in the Visual Arts Building here at Colorado State University. It showcases the work of Michelle Graves, C.J. Hungerman, Cesar Conde, Dominic Sansoni, Anthony Guntran, Yusuf Del Valle, and Fala Tamba. The exhibition will be open until December 22nd. These artists have sparked a needed discussion on gun violence through their work. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kate. Now switching topics, the holidays are a time for friends and family to come together for the winter under one roof and celebrate the blessings in life. However, many of those in less fortunate situations in the community experiencing homelessness are facing challenges to stay warm as we head into the colder months. In response, homeless shelters across Fort Collins are doing everything they can to help those in need survive the harsh northern Colorado winter. Michael Galloway and his son Bodie have gone through trials and tribulations to get to a better place. From escaping a house no longer deemed safe, Galloway has to face the perils of homelessness just to survive. It's a very 
hard decision between ch 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 choosing the love of your life or choosing the child. The situation we were living in was way worse than what we're in now, and it was not safe. Without the love of his life and left with nowhere to go and the gas tank on empty, Galloway kept his head high, searching for a new home. It is a, a test of personal mental fortitude in order to do this. Galloway eventually found his way to Annette Zacharias and the staff of the Family Housing Network. Homeless shelters like the Family Housing Network are all across Fort Collins, with accommodations made for housing families, singles, and their pets. It's really super chilly. So um, we definitely make a priority of that shelter and food component and that safety component. However, the cold months of the holidays can be unforgiving. With the recent overflow of citizens experiencing homelessness, some have to try to survive in below freezing temperatures and nothing but tents. We are hoping to open up our winter overflow shelter. We desperately need some staffing. Um, we need people to come up and be willing to be trained and to help us work in the shelters. The Family Housing Network knows the citizens of Fort Collins experiencing homelessness are strong and will be there to give them hope. Being homeless is not the end. You know, there are people out there who will help you. You just have to find it. And this is the first step. Uh, one finger, all right. With the constant overflow of those in homeless shelters and at the shelters getting left out on the cold, in the cold, excuse me, with the, ex excuse me, I'm, I apologize. With multiple homeless residents getting left out in the cold during this time of year and beyond, many families could and I, I apologize. With the constant overflow of those in homelessness and shelters getting left out in the cold, it is a fear that many residents face during this time of year. They fear that they cannot give their loved ones and be able to give them warmth. Luckily, homeless shelters like the Family Housing Network are always accepting volunteers. A man riding an electric bicycle was seriously injured in a crash with an SUV Tuesday morning. The crash occurred on the intersection of LeMay Avenue and Prospect Road. The biker was heading east on Prospect Road while the driver was traveling west. As the SUV was attempting to turn left into a business parking lot, the bicycle collided with their vehicle. The rider was taken to the hospital to be treated for serious injuries while the SUV driver was unharmed. The investigation is ongoing. Police say that anyone with information about the crash can speak to Officer Matt Breed at this number. Welcome back from the break, Rams. The holidays bring a lot of joy and cheer, but members of our community can be impacted by this time of year a little differently. Christmas is near and so is the holiday cheer, but this time of year looks differently for emergency medical service providers who provide service to our community 24-7, 365 days a year. We end up working on holidays a lot. Our families just kind of adjust to that and we may have Thanksgiving on Friday or Saturday instead of Thursday, Christmas on Christmas Eve, but we make it work. This time of year has a great impact on the number of emergencies needing attention. It's a difference in call volume. Uh, weather definitely makes a big difference. We have a lot more accidents due to ice and snowy conditions like we've had over the last couple of days. We have a lot more trips and falls outside, uh, slipping down the ice, things like that. With more people traveling on the road during the holidays, the chance for car crashes increases. This year, the National Safety Council estimates that 371 people may die on U.S. roads this Christmas holiday period. We may behave in accordance with our experiences in those situations in our own lives that might make us a little bit more careful or cautious. Wear our seatbelts, wear helmets, because we've seen the things that result from people who don't. How the community can help us is being engaged and involved in their own preparedness and being prepared to take care of themselves and each other. The things that people can do in that regard are learn CPR, learn how to use uh, an AED, and learn how to control bleeding and apply tourniquets. Emergency medical service providers are essential to the community, but knowing the increased dangers associated with the holidays, 
can make all of the difference in our community. CSU has announced its new Graduate Assistant Mandary Fee Coverage Plan. During the September fall address, Interim President Rick Miranda mentioned the need for compensation and equity to graduate assistants, specifically when it comes to fees. Now, more and more, more information on this plan has surfaced. Starting with this, in the spring of 2023, graduate assistants in teaching, support, and research will receive partial fee coverage with the plan, with the plan being to have them 100% covered by 2025. This implementation will continue to expand over the coming semesters. Welcome members, a Fort Collins based advocacy group for businesses owned by Black, Latino and Indigenous or BIPOC has awarded $25,000 in grants to help minority owned businesses access capital and resources in Larimer County. With over 30 applications, 16 applicants will receive grants to support needs such as payroll or COVID-19 relief through the Wealth in Numbers program by the BIPOC Alliance. This application process showcased more funding is needed to support more businesses. Aside from the grants awarded, the Alliance has received $50,000 to support mi minority-owned businesses, entrepreneurs, and additional education programs. Funding requests to help minority-owned businesses thrive in the community have totaled over $188 in Larimer County. The City of Fort Collins has come up with a solution to the nights where you've had a little too much to drink but don't want to leave your car behind. Fort Collins Parking Service Department recently launched Safe Choice, a program they hope will hit the brakes on the number of drunk drivers. The program lets people who are unable to drive home safely but want to avoid their cars getting ticketed a chance to negate said ticket. Drivers can call parking services is number by 10 the following morning and have them waive the ticket. It should be noted that the new program does not cover people in parking garages. Santa is stopping by a nonprofit organization here in Fort Collins tomorrow for their holiday open house. Child Safe, a nonprofit organization here in Fort Collins, is on its 36th year providing therapy and resources for families and victims of childhood of trauma and abuse in Northern Colorado. In 2021, Child Safe served a record number over, of over 1,000 clients, but they have seen an increased demand for services in 2022. 73% of their clients fall below the national poverty line, and they never turn anyone away due to the, their inability to pay. Their doors for the open house will be open to the public from 4 to 7 in the evening. Wow, that's just wonderful, and I know the kids must have loved all the donations, all the toys, seeing Santa come into town. That has to be great. Yeah, and there's actually going to be some youth performers there, like performing holiday songs and stuff, so it should be should be a fun time. I love Christmas carols. So. Yeah, me yeah. too. They don't do it enough, I feel like. Exactly. <laughs> The Roaring, 20s are, the Roaring Twenties are known for speakeasies, but the best one of 2022 is right here in Old Town Fort Collins. But I'll leave the mystery of finding this bar for you. The entrance of the social in Old Town is tucked away, but the best modern speakeasy in the United States, according to a viral Yelp article, still made it to the top of the list. During the Prohibition era, people gathered at these hidden bars that illegally sold alcohol. In today's age, these establishments embrace the history of this time with bars that mimic the retro style. Their website describes the establishment as a locally owned underground cocktail bar. When I went to Social, I got a charcuterie board, an espresso martini, and experienced the Prohibition era only 100 years later. Welcome back from the break, Rams. My name is Abby Flores. The holidays are a time for giving, but an anonymous student who has been leaving crochet octopi around campus reminds us that spreading kindness can be integrated into our lives year round. They're cute, squishy, and totally able to put a smile on your face. An anonymous person on the CSU campus has been leaving these crochet octopi for students to find. I've always made octopi. Like it's been the thing that I teach people how to make just because I think it's easy and fun. And then I thought it would be kind of funny if I just like put them randomly on campus just to like see if anything would happen. So I left two and then it got posted on Facebook and then I was like, 
whoa, people actually like this, so I figured I would keep going. <laughs> For many, finding an octopus has been able to bring pure joy during stressful times. I think my goal here is really just to like spread some joy on campus. I feel like we're all kind of stuck in our ways just going about our lives and I think it's fun to have something on campus for people to look for. Like to just get their heads out of their phones or whatever they're doing or the test that they just had. Something to just bring people back out. The majority of the octopi I hide I never hear about again, so it's just fun to speculate where they ended up and I do feel like the ones that I do hear about they always end up with people who actually needed them and I hear stories about people who've had like rough days and they find one on a day that they really needed that extra joy so it's just a fun thing to encourage in the overall CSU community. I must say it is pretty incredible how these tiny octopi can make all the difference in someone's day. That Well, where can I find this mystery octopi lady? Yeah, I can't tell you, unfortunately. You can only go to her Instagram, mm. which is octopi of CSU. That's, gonna, that's the fun of it, JJ, because you have get, to go find it. I'm going to get everybody here an octopi, and we're going to have them lined up on this desk. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it's going to be CTV <laughs> octopi. Could be a team bonding experience. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. We could go on an <laughs> octopus hunt. We could, we could yeah. even make them together. Oh, we, we learned how to show them. Yeah, who, who knows? We can start our own fun. off brand octopus <laughs> <laughs> to take down the real one. Well, it's going to be a CTV rivalry. <laughs> all right, well, Rams, that wraps, up tonight, that wraps up tonight's news for you all. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure not to miss next week's final shows of the semester. Stay safe, and we'll see you all then. See it again.